football. Living the Carthy Scarborough. Try! Try to St. Helens! St. Helens try, he gets up and plays it to Roby, he finds Wilkin, looking back to Walsh, Louis McCarthy Scarsbrook hit that at pace and would not be stopped. Three. Roby, have a little scamper, with fine Turner, short ball, Louis McCarthy Scarsbrook, try, try to St. Helens, look at the delight on Louis McCarthy Scarsbrook's face. 33rd consecutive appearance for the Londoner, Sinbind at Wigan, tries in three of the last six, he's in fabulous form, nine tries in all. Hello and welcome to the second instalment of the HC TV UK YouTube channel with interviews with past and present legends of the rugby league game. And uh, I'm pleased to, to welcome today's guest, the one and only, Louis McCarthy Scarsbrook. How's it going, Paul? Hello, Bob. You all right? Not too bad, Sean. Not too bad. How's pre-season going? Cold. And it's uh, it's all on AstroTurf now, so it's not good on the old hips. <laughs> oh, how's the knees? How's the knees? Yeah, they're all right. It's knees. So that's, that's, that's the thing I've got to look after. The old, old hips. Oh, mate, you're getting old now, as you yeah, say. So, just let like the, the, the young kids do the do the stuff and uh, just sit back and watch them. But, um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for the gold card to come out where the conditioner pulls you out and goes, Come here. And I'm like, All right, yeah, we, we spoke about this last week with Lily about when you get older, you kind of get the, the coaches who give you the little passes and things like that. He yeah. said he's not got a full one yet. No, so you get no. the, old, the old session here and there. Yeah, no, just I, I, I'm always I have my hand up. Well, thanks for joining us anyway for uh, for this. Um, we're gonna have a quick chat about your career and obviously growing up in London. The the difference it is from being up here with uh, it being a rugby league mad and how you got into the game. A little bit about Millwall, a little about your own YouTube career, uh, which you might not want to talk about, but we'll we'll get to it. Don't worry, I've not got the videos, but. Stay tuned, we'll have a chat. A um, little bit of ex-coaches and then we've got your, your best five players and your set of six. So, first off, we, we, we first met way back in 2005, 2006 at Hull FC, um, which I, I don't think many people know that you, you kind of, you was at London, but you, you, your first opportunity to play or first opportunity to, to get involved with Super League team was, was at Hull FC. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was uh, many moons ago. Yeah, uh, but yeah. Four, four, four London lads got moved up and moved into Bev Road. If you know Bev Road in in all, it's uh, not the place to be really. So yeah, they've moved four Londoners up there, and uh, yeah, I, I, it was a fantastic time. Fantastic time. Wasn't it? We won the the under twenty ones grand final as well. So it was it was, uh, it was fantastic up there. But yeah, there was four of us. Uh, me, Mike Warrancy, Addy Adabisi and Ian Lane. So all in like a nice little town ass and uh, that got trashed. <laughs> so yeah, but it was, yeah, it was a, it was a very steep learning curve. Uh, we were on peanuts really and we were having baked beans on toast for dinners most weeks. Uh, and if, if, unless someone won, won on the horses and then we were having steaks. So it was all right. Yeah, I remember some of the, the pre-season sessions that the, the four of you were involved in. Um, Addy always pulled the, the sickle cell when he was getting yeah. tired. Yeah, uh, he couldn't do it. Laney never said anything, and Mike, you could never shut up the same as yourself. No, so, yeah. Uh, um, no, was, them, was, them heels were terrible with Billy. They were absolutely terrible. They were. They could. They they could have. They could have broke you bad. Yeah. Yeah, they did plenty of times. But yeah. was there ever an opportunity for you to sign at Hull, or was it just? Oh, how did it come about, and what was the purpose with it? No, all all I learned is that we went up there to play twenty ones just because London didn't have a twenty ones. They were trying to get, um, trying to obviously get like the youth together, but they wanted to keep hold of uh, a couple of the under 18s So as soon as we got too old for under 18s we couldn't play, and we weren't ready for first team. So 
then the opportunity arised that we could go to Hull, um, and, and and we did, and it was it was it was fantastic. It was a great learning curve because oh, I remember that first day we got I got dropped up there, uh, put all my bags in, and we went to the shops and got no got asked straight away. Went oh yeah, you're the boys from London, isn't you? and I was like oh my god, what's going on here? Like literally, like, you can't be doing that. Could could you understand what they were saying, or could they not understand what you were saying? Uh, yeah, probably a bit of both. Yeah, so we just like laugh ha, and then walk off. <laughs> the awkward silence. Yeah, yeah. So, obviously, coming from London, it's not traditionally a hotbed of rugby league. We have seen quite a few players played throughout Super League become Super League players, but for you, it was a little bit different. I think uh, listening to an interview that you did previously, you, you were talking about. It was just one of your teachers told you because you weren't the most academic to go and try rugby league, and it all stemmed from her. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I think yeah, he told me and Mike to go and uh, go go and have trials down at uh, London Broncos then um, because they they were they were looking for young kids to develop the in the in the, in London, obviously. So we went down there and uh, it just just by chance, really, just by chance, touched the rugby ball. When I was 15, and now I'm having a conversation with you <laughs> and about rugby league. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, it must have been strange. Also, what, what about your mates and things like that when you spoke about rugby league? Is, is it do they all join in with you, or just like give you strange funny looks? No, it was all like well, I was, I was going, well when I used to go, I'll go and training, and I have to go all the way to Kidbrook for training. So I had to get on a couple of buses and a train. And then sometimes it would be in uh, Osterley and you had to get a train and that was like two hours there and two hours back. So you weren't getting in till late. So it's like, they're like, what have you been doing? And like, oh, I've just gone, been training. Like, and they're like, oh, right. And then it was like, what? oh, yeah, what's that? It's, it's rugby, isn't it? Yeah, they think they play rugby union. But no, it's, oh, it's rugby league, yeah. So you go, well, where are you going this week? I'm going up Newcastle. Oh, all right, so, all right. so. So, it, so it weren't really an easy path for you, were it, to, to get involved in the game? No, it took it took time, and t- like all of us, there was like a, a massive group of us that come from East and South London that met to go to, all the way to West London. So there was a massive group of us on the trains and all that, and we just our, our kids were back then. You were just mucking around on trains, obviously not paying for tickets, and then the guard would come on. You get off and get on the next one. So it was just, it's just, it was like a, it was, it was class. It was, it was good. Good times. Well, talking about London. Um, before we move on to, to your stuff at Saints and your career at London, what's, what's your thoughts on Super League in London? Obviously, they, they missed out this year. Uh, unfortunate, probably two years ago to get relegated. Um, does Rugby League need a team in London or a Super League team in London? I think it will. The, me with me, me bias that on, I'm like, yeah, it does. Because I think a team in London makes it grow. I think when you're in the capital... Of, of England and you've got a team that's growing and they were they were very close to staying up uh, two years ago and I, I can't see how they didn't get more of a vote to get in this year but obviously Lee got the vote uh, but it's, it's one of them I think so that's the, London London's the capital and I would love to see London back in Super League yeah that, that's me biased that on though yeah it does make sense for him to be down there and what they've got, what they've got down there is they've got a very good core youngster group, and they've got so many schools playing it throughout the area. They've got a chairman who just will not stop believing that he's got a chance to get us into Super League and win something. So with Husey, and obviously they've got a coach there now, Danny Ward, who's been there and he's had him up and he's had him down, and he's still there now and he's still fighting. So yeah, yeah. it'd be nice to see him back up. Just but that's with me, that's that's my sentiment out on if you know what I mean. <laughs> It was interesting to, for you to use the word us then, but we'll uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, something yeah. for next year. Oh, I'm a London, aren't I? So there you go. Yeah. Um, you, you did touch on something else then. You spoke about the schools, uh, the amount of rugby that, rugby league that's played in schools down there. I, I don't think people realise how popular the sport is with schools down south. Yeah, yeah it's massive. I think because it's such a an easy game to pick up, I think... You obviously you have football, which is an easy game, and that no doubt is going to be the main thing, main bread and butter of every school. But when you try and play union, you're trying to learn kids how to play union. It's obviously hard. And league, you go well. You got to tackle in five times. They're going to kick it, and then you got to tackle in five times. So it's, it's easier to get hold of. So I think, 
Yeah, and London kids, London kids want like want a nice quick game, and I think that suits them. So it's it's not too bad. But there is there is hundreds and hundreds of schools playing it. It's it's ridiculous down there. Yeah, fingers crossed. We we do see them. For me, I, I think it's it's great that uh, when London are in Super League, um, and we'll, we'll see how things go. Well, your time at London um, was what four years? Did you your four seasons at London? Yeah, yeah. How how was it playing at Twickenham when crowds weren't the greatest? Is it like when you play in last year when there was nobody in the ground? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was. You know. To be fair, to be fair, they they did come out. I think I think probably must have averaged about two thousand, two thousand a game. I think one game we had a double header where we were afterwards, and you could just see all the union union like bods get off and just go. So it was, it's a bit like that. But the the, the crowds did grow, and I think the ground at now is quite a nice, unique ground because everyone stands close and they've got like a nice. Bit there, but the, the the time down there, it was it was class. But the cr- the crowds were getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But the only way the crowds are going to get bigger is with success. So if they win or stay up and or win something, then the crowds are going to get bigger. So that's that's the opportunity. Obviously, they've got to get up first and then try and win something. I think one of uh, this will move on to our, our next topic we we coach. But one of my memories of it playing against you was uh, we played two thousand and ten. And good for I think it was Easter Monday we played. It was, I was playing for KR at the time, and we absolutely everything went right for us. Every pass we threw, every kick we put in was perfect. I know what you're going to say, yeah, I know what you're going to say. Yeah. <laughs> when, what what was the obviously the reaction? Ryan's reaction after I say I know what what happened, but yeah. I've never heard it from another coach. Um, was it normal? Uh, no, it wasn't. No, I think I think he was disappointed and angry, uh, to say the least. Uh, and then it just went to the extreme of extremes. I've never, never seen that. And uh, the coach journey back was just dead quiet, like dead quiet. Everyone just on tenterhooks. <laughs> yeah. So for those who don't know what, like I said, we had like, like a really good performance. Okay, we we, we, like we put fifty points on London and. Yeah. Brian McDermott took the, the London boys. This is after they played Good Friday, they played Easter Monday, and he took you and flogged you for two hours straight after the game. Uh, yeah, it was uh, yeah, it was about yeah two or three hours uh, on Roehampton Vale, uh, and I lived I lived near Danny Ward, so I had to pick Danny Ward up. So we got a text message saying you're training tonight. So we went down after we lost. So we went home, got our gear. And I've picked up Waldy, uh, and as we're driving in, it's about a 10 minute drive. I was driving him in, and I looked at him, and he looked at me, and he went, Why don't we just drive to France? <laughs> and we were that close to driving to France, and it was, yeah, but we pulled in, and it was a two and a half hour of army drills, and uh, like, uh, how do you, you say it? Run, run, run at me, see you next Tuesday. It was horrible, where it was just an absolute bash of fun. And it was, is, uh, yeah, terrible. Is it true that he watched the video that night and apologised to you all at training the day after saying that you weren't that bad? It was just that we were red hot. <laughs> he, he, uh, he got us in the next morning, he got us in the next morning and said that. You weren't that bad, but I'm still going to flog you. And he flogged us exactly again at six o'clock in the morning that next morning. And he flogged us. Uh, yeah, he flogged us good. But the the ever the, uh, the the one that's burnt in my memory is we were doing it all, and uh, he was just on a bike next to us, telling us what to do. And it was like it was like <laughs> it was like a movie. I was like, oh my god, this is this is ridiculous. But I know, I said from doing a little bit of research, Brian McDermott, someone who you personally hold in high regard, and you said that he was the person who, who put you on the right track in terms of your career. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I think he was the one that that pushed me to 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 be better. If you know what I mean. So he he was always trying to make trying to make you better. And I don't know, I think obviously he was a forward and I was a forward, so we we had that bond. But. Yeah, he was he was a he was a he was a good coach for me because he, he told you how it was and I'd rather have, I'd rather someone tell me as it is than try and sugarcoat it or anything. So it was uh, I'd rather it be black and white and not uh, rainbow colours. 
Yeah, so you've had, obviously, coach-wise, you've had, you've had probably a, a wide variety of styles of coaching with someone like Brian, um, Justin Hallbrook, you've got Christian Wolf now, you, you've had Kez as well, you've Kieran Cunningham. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think who else you've had. Um, Nathan Brown, Roy Simmons. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you've had, you've had a, what for you is the most important trait for all of them? Uh, probably the, be the best trait is that they're just to be just to be like I said, like honest, really. Just tell you when you're shit and tell you when you tell you when you're good. If you know what I mean, and yeah. don't beat around the bush. And if you drop, just tell me why, and I can work on it or or not. And luckily enough, I've had a lot of coaches that are honest with me and just tell me. So it's it's, it's easy. They're good, are they? You're just... hey, they they all, they all oh. told me shit, so that's it. <laughs> <laughs> just keep picking it up. Who who's the best? I know you said like you I said you all Brian in high regard from previous interviews that you've done. Who's the best? Uh for for me, um probably obviously obviously we won our first I won my first one with, with Nathan. I'll never forget him as like a coach and all that. He was he was a great fella and he, he told us, but for me who who ch changed the whole philosophy of us and the whole the outlook for the whole squad uh, was Holbrook. I think. I mean, Justin was he was immense. When he come in, he, he he knew what he wanted to do, and and we all just just joined in with him because he was he was he was he was a very very good coach. Yeah, he weren't obviously at the time. He weren't really a big massive name coming over from Australia. Were he? when he when he got the Saints show and the transformation in the, the team mm. in so the two years that it was there was was unreal. Yeah. Um, how, from a, from a player's point, when you hear about some of the big names that were touted about, and then you get Justin Holbrook, is it what you was expecting or different? To tell tell the truth, even if you rattled off some big names, I probably wouldn't even know who they were. So when he turned up, I thought, oh, actually, give him a go. So there he goes. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't really have a clue, really. Uh, so unless they said Alex Ferguson, I'd be like, oh wow, you can't get yeah. Ferguson, yeah. Well, you, you set a six questions after will be funny if you've not got a clue about stuff like that. No, yeah, there you go. Yeah, so yeah, it's we'll gonna be edit them out. <laughs> yeah, well, that was a little bit of coaching. Obviously, from a playing point of view, you see, you, you started at London, you progressed through the, the, the system at London, and then the, the move came across to St. Helens in 2011. Yeah, since then, so is it two league leader shields, three grand finals? Yeah, there's, yeah. There's, yeah. The, the challenge, the, the challenge cup missing. Yeah, yeah, is, that's the only one. Yeah, is twenty twenty one the year for the Challenge Cup? Hopefully, yeah, yeah. We had we had an opportunity to go there. We didn't put a, a good performance on, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully, and get their full set, and it'd be nice. And then it'd be it'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be nice. Well, was it part of the goal? So when you started off playing, you, know, you was that young kid at London. You was coming through the academy. Was it looking at representing England? Was it winning trophies? Was it just making a living? No, no, it was uh, starting off at London. And I, I tell this story all the time. It was getting fifty quid a win, and that was to go and buy trainers. And that was my, that was my thing. If you're a London boy, you just want all the nice new trainers and all that. But that's got that's got that's got beaten out of me. All these kids, so I can't, I can't afford them now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll move on to the kids after. Yeah, I'm, not allowed, I'm not allowed to buy new trainers because if I buy new trainers, then they want new trainers. So I just yeah, just can't. So Louis, we we spoke about grand finals during that, and of the three, which is the most special? Uh, the, the the first will always be the best, but there was always like a subplot to it, if you know what I mean. So there's always like a an asterisk next to it, but obviously the 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 second one, uh, Salford done amazing to get there. They played amazing, and they we played. I think it was a fantastic game to watch, and that was a good one to win. But last last year's was just just unbelievable. The way the way it finished, and uh, the emotion, and the, the only sad thing is there there was no one there to watch it. If you know what I mean, so. Otherwise, it'd have been talked about much more than it has been. If you know what I mean, a last-minute Aguero moment by by Wellsby. So it's it was yeah. So last year was probably up there as probably one of the best games I've played in. I think it was just an absolute ding dong. So 
Uh, yeah. as, as a Wigan and start watching it. <laughs> yeah, I was gutted. Uh, I was gutted for lockers. Uh, I, I'm not still with me and Wigan, but you kind of, I think anybody involved with Rugby League sat there and watched it and thought, wow, you can't, you can't, even if you're a Wigan fan and losing to Saints, you can't have too many qualms. That was an unbelievable, one of the best games I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. When did it sink in that what you've just done in terms of the actual game and how it was won? Um, when, when, when he finally, when he finally, when the final video ref decided to put up try it after watching it a thousand times, trying not to give it, and he give it, and it sunk in. It just went, oh, we've done this, and just that at that moment, you just black out and you, you're just running man, cuddling everyone, jumping on everyone, and. It's, yeah, it's, it, yeah, it, it 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 probably sunk in truly, probably about three days afterwards when uh, when we start getting right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think my, my favourite picture is Kyle Lamar's picture with his Sports Direct mug, sat on his couch, still in his playing kit. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I think we yeah we all did we didn't give him a shower. None of us got a shower. Uh, and we stayed on that bus until it until until he had no petrol left. So it, was, so it wasn't too bad. So it was fantastic. Yeah, it was it was a very good night afterwards. One thing I want to talk about is this little spin before you on the field. Yeah, People that's the, that's that's the inner inter- footballer coming out on me. You know, they all do the crosses and they all do that. That's yeah. my little my little homage to. I wish I was a footballer. <laughs> when did that start? And oh, why? I've oh, I've done it for years and years, yeah, years and years. I don't know why. I just cross it and then I do that. Yeah, I'm a a bit. I don't. I, well, you know, but I'm a bit tapped in the head. So there. So, so, yeah. Yeah. A bit. yeah, a bit. Just a, tap, just a, tap. Just a bit. So family wise, obviously, Jess, you've got three boys and a girl. Three boys, one girl. Yeah, three boys, one girl. The youngest two are twins. Yeah, yeah, youngest two are twins. So we've got obviously. Just my wife, and then I've got uh, Rudy, my oldest, who's going to be nine in a couple of days. No, 20, 29 days. So, and then I've got Devon, who's the the middle child. And if you know middle children, they are middle children for a reason because they're absolute bonk dogs. Uh, and then I've got the two twins, one boy, one girl, uh, Nancy and Cassidy. So, yeah. It's, uh, and, then, and everyone sat watching this going, oh, have you still got her after 12 months of lockdown? I see good genes, good genes. <laughs> good genes, yeah. How has it been, man? How has it been coping? How has it been coping? I'll say yeah. with lockdown with the four kids. You know the, the, the first one, I don't know how many it's been now, there's been so many, but the first one was a breeze. It was like, because we had no training and it was like summer, it was like out in the back garden. No school, so it was like, oh, we'll do like a little bit of school work, and then we'll do, then we we'll go out and go for a walk. Uh, it's a, it was a breeze. It was nice. It was like you never get that time back again, like with your kids and all that. And then this one was pouring down with rain. Uh, they, all they want to do is fight each other. Uh, Nancy and Cassidy are just like climbing up everywhere. And if you put anything down, like the dog bowl, or the dog decides to move, or you leave a chair out, they're on it on top of the table, like trying to jump off it so it's just it's literally I'm glad I'm going training I'm glad I'm glad sports allowed to go training I mean, Jess cries every time you go out yeah, she does, yeah. well she I come in through the door and she just walks straight out and goes you're you're you do it <laughs> your turn boom yeah exactly yeah <laughs> but um, in terms of like being a rugby player people kind of associate you and they look at you and think that it's a different world but it's not, is it? Like from a mental point of view, for you over the last twelve months, how difficult has it been? <laughs> like, well, I think like, like like I said to you, the first one was a breeze. It was, it was. I thought it was class. I, I, I enjoyed lockdown. I know a lot of people found it really hard, but I enjoyed being at home and just mucking around. I thought, I thought you can never get that, and but I could see how tough it is. But it's, it's the ones where where people haven't got. To talk to people and all that, that I think it's a bit hard. And obviously the old, the older generation, all that, the, there's a lovely lady around the corner to me that I always stop at and knock on the door, see if she needs anything. 
Uh, and she always goes, no, 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 I'll go and get it, I'll go and get it. And she must be in her 80s or something like that, but she's still going on the bus and still going to thingy. she wear a mask, wear her gloves, and she, off she goes. So she just cracks on with it. But, yeah, I just think yeah, it's been hard, but you just got to get on with it. I think it's just it's just the way it is at the moment. It's just very hard, but you just got to get on with it. Um, back, back to a little bit more of your, your playing days. Um, when I, I went on YouTube before and... <laughs> Put your name in and uh, see what came up. And there's a couple of little scraps there with uh, Frank Paul Nuisala in one of the derby. Yeah. I think his first, his first Wigan derby. Um, oh, yeah. And one against Catalan. Catalan, yeah. yeah, that one, yeah. What's been your favourite scrap? Oh, favourite scrap. When you, when, you, when you could get away with it, and I, I wasn't worried about the fine because back then the clubs paid it, but then it came in that you had to pay it. Uh, so I started, stop, I stopped. <laughs> uh, I've had loads. I think probably the, the good one was probably the Catalan because I was young then and I've ran in from about 30 metres away and just tried fighting everyone. And so. Well, there's, there's the one where you played for London and there's a Saints one of like your early days at Saints. And I've, like I said, I was watching it today. Oh, yeah. And you and uh, Alex Wormsley are involved. And I don't know if you, you'll have watched it, but I can, you go in and then Alex Walter grabs hold of you and you're swinging him and he's stopping you swinging him. So, you should never, ever, ever, ever go in and protect and try and, try and hurt someone to, for anyone. Look, see, I'm sticking up for him and then I'll, I'll get held back by him. See? Yeah. So. Oh. <laughs> never stick well, up for your mate, in other words. <laughs> yeah, it, that was always it was convenient for me. I always used to get there late. Just as it was finishing. So you, mean, was, you mean you just wait at the back and then... No, it was that slow. It took me that long to get there. <laughs> so, back to YouTube. So, I want to talk to you about your, your know, YouTube I videos. Know, I know, I know, you know. Because I know who you spoke to. So yeah, so yeah. yeah I, I'm not going to put any links attached to these or anything like that. But yeah. in your younger days, you was at London. Yourself, Danny R, Johnny Gresham and... Dave Mills. Danny or Johnny Gration, David Mills, yeah, very bored, very bored uh, boys, boys then, yeah. Uh, well, Danny Orr was a man, I don't know why he joined him, yeah. Yeah, so these videos, they are on YouTube, we'll leave it for people to try and find. Um, but there's, you, you put your artistic talent to some use, didn't you? And there's yes. how to get rid of a dead body. Yeah. There's that one. There's uh, there's uh, what's the other one? There's uh, they're all filmed. Most some of them are filmed in uh, when we had like a two week tour of Catalan. So we had like a two week tour where we had a, we had a camp over there. And uh, as you can imagine, you know, like two weeks, it was boring. So we just decided to start doing movies. I think. The uh, magic Mil one. Yeah, Millsy had Millsy was Arnold Schwarzenegger in one. I think and it was uh yeah they're very good edited they are very good i don't believe why well, we didn't get an oscar or anything yeah well, well we'll leave it for people to try and find them if not we'll yeah. post links yes. uh, in a couple of weeks but yeah it's it's a little bit different for you uh, if you want to watch <laughs> there's a saw one i remember that there's yeah. a saw one. yeah there's a saw one but yeah the, the, like i said they are interesting watching not some of the the, the voiceovers <laughs> a little bit too humorous. So, yeah, the 18 plus, are they some of them as well? Yeah, so that, definitely. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you about opposition fans because I know the last few times I've seen you at, at Warrington Gate, well, Warrington Saints games, Warrington fans have got a particular dislike for you. Oh, is there any. Is that right. just everywhere? Or? I thought they liked me. No, didn't they? I thought when they boo you, they like you, didn't they? Yeah, well, uh, is it everywhere you go, or is it just? Is there a reason? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just I don't know. I'm I'm all right though, because um, I, 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 I remember when we went, we went uh, Ireland World Cup, we went Ireland World Cup, and it was the first time I met Philbs, Joe Philbin, and I went, all right, so how's it going? Like, I spoke to him and all that. And he was like, last we had a beer and all that. And I was speaking to him, like laughing and joking. And then he just looked at me and went, do you know what? I thought you were going to be a massive knobhead. But you're actually all right. And I went, 
Yeah, I know, I'm just a nubbin on the field. I'm a nubbin on the field, but I'm all right. And he went, yeah, you are, yeah. So it was like that, so... Yeah, and that, that was film, so it was... It, it was like, I was like, I was like, oh, I don't like... Yeah, oh, yeah it looks... Just, yeah. Looks can be deceiving. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. But yeah, then, yeah, then when we play him again, I just give it to him now. I go, see, yeah. I have a nubbin on the field. <laughs> Well, you mentioned Ireland and uh, representing Ireland. I say World Cup at the end of the year. Is that something you've got plans on? Yeah, Touchwood. Yeah, from injury free, uh, it'll be it'll be class to to represent my mum's side of the family. I think my mum my mum loved it that I went and played for them out there. They they come out and and, and watch me. So it was, yeah, I think it's a massive. Um, that tip of the cap to my mum's side because she 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 loves that side of the family and it was nice to 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 do that for her. So it was it was it was nice that I had the opportunity as well. So um, yeah yeah they they loved it. Well, plus they got two weeks in Australia for it as well. So there you go. <laughs> well, obviously you have represented England as well. Yeah. Um, I'll apologise. I was talking to to Chris earlier before this and. Only realised that you made your England debut in a game that I was playing in as well. Um, I had no idea. Can't even remember the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we'll we'll talk about that later on, or we'll mention it later on. But yeah, you, so you got two England caps as well, um, which means more to you, England or Ireland caps? Oh. Don't sit on the fence and say they're both the same. No, I think I think uh, what means means the more. I think it was going to the World Cup with Ireland. I think I think it was, it was uh, like a privilege to go out there and play. And we were we were unlucky that we didn't qualify. We were we were very close to qualifying if we would have got a try against Papua New Guinea or Papua New Guinea. But yeah, that 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 means a lot, obviously, to go to the World Cup and how the way we performed. Uh, no one give us a chance, and obviously we done really well. But. Uh, yeah, the England, the England one was fantastic, but it, it was, it was. Uh, I think it was just like a, like it, I, it came too early for me. I think in my career, and I just didn't absorb it in. Where I went to the World Cup, and I loved every minute of it. So it was, yeah. Well, World Cup, also the uh, the platform for the for the best players in the world. Something I asked you to do, and we did it with with Chris Hill on the last one. Is you name your top five players, the best five players that you played with, starting at five. And we want a reason why they're all in the. Okay, yeah. So number so. five, number five is uh, Tony Politua, uh, a massive back row, and he was a massive uh, help to me uh, when I first signed here. And uh, he's a fantastic footballer, and uh, for an absolute beast of a man, uh, so skillful and very knowledgeable about the game and how ha- how to do it and. He just uh, he took me aside and like, I still speak to him now. He's a fantastic boy. He just he'll, he'll text me and he uh, he just like looked after me and, and got me through yeah, with with my family and his family and all that. So he was a fantastic fantastic fellow and unbelievable skill for he had hands he had hands the size of dinner plates and he could just flick it and it, it looked it looked so effortless effortless if you know what I mean. So it was. Effortless. 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 I can't say it. So, it's got Tony at number five. Number four? Number four, Robert Purdom. Uh, He was my first captain and he was an absolute war horse of a a player. Uh, And he could play any position and he was just a true leader and uh, he still is now, really. Every... uh, Every time he gives me a text to go up there and do lambing season, I just tell him, no, get fucked. Yeah. Yeah. Is he doing Rob? Or is he not really. Yeah, he's up, yeah he's, up in, uh, he's up in Whitehaven and he's doing all his farming and he's, he's rearing beef, beef cows and he's got lambs and he's got everything. He's, he's a builder of everything. So, yeah, you probably should get him on here. He's, 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 uh, he'll, he'll have some stories. <laughs> okay, so per doors number four, three. Number three is Danny Orr. So there you go. Uh, Danny Orr at London, he, he moved in with me uh, when, he, when he signed for London from Wigan. Uh, and he moved in with me for five or six months. And obviously I met his family. And he had a massive input on me on how to play the game and what you want to do. And 
I spoke to him before I, before I signed for Saints. He said, what do you think? And he said, it's a great move. Come up here and learn your trade. You, you want to come in the game and win things. It's not a better, not a better club to go to. Uh, and he helped me along and he looked after me. He helped me with my diet and everything. So, yeah, he was a massive influence in me. And he's a, yeah, a little general, a little general. And he was, he's probably the only person to get away calling me a fat fucker on the field. <laughs> a great bloke as well. Uh, yeah. number, number two? Number two is Johnny Lomax. Obviously, he's still here at, still here at Saints. He's a, a phenomenal talent, an unbelievable player, an unbelievable professional. And he's just... Uh, Probably behind the next fellow, I'm going to say he's he's a, he's he's a Saints legend. Uh, that's going to be statues and memorials written of him and everything because he's uh, for what he's been through at such a young age to come out the other side and represent Great Britain, England, win everything he's won. Uh, is a fantastic achievement. Yeah, agreed. Number one, I think I've got uh, an idea. There's the only one. There's only one, and it's uh, Mr. Petrol himself. Is James Roby. I think. Uh, there's nothing you can say about him. I think uh, he has... People don't give him the credit he deserves. I think uh, everyone thinks he's had an off game when he's when he's done about an 8 out of 10. What he puts his body through is, is unbelievable. Uh, there was one season where the bottom of his body wasn't connected to the top of his body, but he played a whole season with it. It's ridiculous. And he's, he's just unbelievable. And he's just... Uh, he's. He's probably up there as probably one of the best captains that you could have as well, just by following example of him, because yeah. he, he's he's that good on the field and he doesn't he doesn't shout and scream about it. He just gets to the point and carries on, and he just he leads by example. I think Chris, obviously Chris Hill put him in his top five last week, um, yeah. and I think he, that that is how he, he speaks volumes with somebody like from another team, one that plays with that football with you and, and puts you in. Um, but I think, like you say, he's just consistent year after year. And when he, like you say, he has an eight out of ten game, people start saying he's had a bad game. And you're thinking, yeah. well, that's a great game for somebody else. Um, I think, was, was it five tackles he missed last year? Yeah, ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous. And I was thinking, I was thinking the other night, I was when when you said to me, try and think, I was thinking, I was going, I, was going, oh, who could, uh, I said, obviously, Jack, Bro, Jimmy, Jimmy's going to be number one. Rose is going to be number one. And I was going, I was trying to think back, I was going, have I ever seen him have a bad game? Have I ever seen him have a bad game? And I was going, I can't remember. I just can't remember. And it's like, it's that, it's, it's that what makes you feel sick. Yeah. <laughs> that, that you just keep going and going. Yeah, that he's that good, yeah. yeah. Oh. No, nice way. We appreciate that. Um, all that we've got left, so we won't keep you long, is, is your set of six. All right, here we go. Still all got five. what? All on football. You got one football. Yes, all right. Go on, um, Chris got five out of six last week, so high standards to. Yeah, but he lives and breathes rugby league. Uh, well, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I tried to make them easier Easy for you. Yeah. I've, I've tried to link them to Saints majority. Um, question one: According to the Saints website, you've got the longest name, so you're shortened to LMS, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. There's two players with eight letters in the name. Kyla Moore, and who's the other one? Kyla Moore and Matty Lees, is it? Do you want to count them up? M-A-T-I-M-A-T-I-M-A-T-I-M-A-T-I-M-A-T-I-M-A-T-I-M-A-T-I-M-A-T-I-M-A-T-I-M-A-T-I-M-A-T-I-M-A-T-I-M-A-
and they uh, better clue they beat Bradford. Ninety seven. Ninety nine. Ninety nine. Oh, damn it. Question four on yourself. Your hundredth game for St Helens was against who? Mate, oh, it's your hundredth. It's a special occasion. And it was a Challenge Cup game. I ain't even got a shirt with it on. I need a shirt. Hang on. Hundredth game, Challenge Cup game. Uh, we'll usually either get Warrington or Wigan in Challenge Cup. So I'm going to go Warrington. Leeds Rhinos. Oh, there you go. Hey, I thought hundredth game's usually special, mate. You, you should not. I've played so many, I can't remember. Lots to the end. Right, your football question. Come on in. Who is the current Millwall manager? <sighs> Mate, you're a Millwall fan. I know, I've just seen it. I was just literally, my mind has gone blank. I was, I've got all the scores up and all that. Oh, no. Oh, God's sake. Right, I don't want you to embarrass yourself, so I'll give you his initials of GR. GR, Rowett, Gary Rowett, Jesus Christ, what am I doing? Yeah, there, right. goes, there you go. Oh my God, what nice. an idiot. What an right, idiot. question six. Last one. Mind, literally, my mind went black then. I was like, yeah. oh, all the scores. God, okay, right. So, Ben Barber was the last Saints player to win the Man of Steel. But which Saints player won it in 2008? 2008. Um... Would you like multiple choice? We've got canvases up on the in the training ground, but we haven't been to the training ground for ages. But they're all up there on dates, and I'm trying to think. Was it Jammer? Jammer's up there. I don't know if it's. Is that your answer? Hey. Is that your answer? Well, give me a wink on my. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go on, go Jammer. James Jammer. Yeah, mate, Jammer's correct. Yes, yes. Yeah, so, I'll, I'll I'll give you th I'll give you three, three and a half. So you get half a point for the Joshua Sim. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Always call oh, him Joshua as well, not Simsy. Yeah. <laughs> I'll listen up for your next interview. <laughs> so, Louis, thank you very much for your time. Um, don't forget yourself as well. Subscribe to the YouTube channel to uh, HCTV UK. Subscribe with a chance to win a Chris Hill testimonial shirt. So, have you, I've seen Saints, why are you doing any more testimonial events, Louis, when you missed out last year, or are you all no, done? I'm, I'm all done now. I'm all done. I'm, uh, I've had a, fact, like, everyone has been, my, my consider, I got my game in, which was fantastic, before the world went mad. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm done. It's all over to uh, Tommy Mac now. So, uh, good luck to him on his, on the COVID testimonial, as I call it. <laughs> Good luck to us all, mate. Uh, but no, like I said, Louis, thank you very much. Cheers for your time. All the best to the family. Yes, and, uh, thank you. Fingers crossed we see you back on that pitch soon. Nice one. Cheers, brother. Thank you very much for having me. Cheers. Cheers, good, pal. See you later.